everything was proceeding on schedule as planned. And then, the unforeseen happened while crossing the mountains of Yugoslavia. In dense clouds, the five bomber groups became separated. Those flying at higher levels picked up a tailwind and moved well ahead of the others. Once over Romania, the strike force dropped so low they could not be detected by radar. They met no enemy fighter resistance as they closed in, but because of the separation over the mountains, only the lead group had the vital element of surprise in their favor when they reached Ploesti. The trailing groups, with Colonel Keynes and Colonel Johnson's elements, arrived several minutes later over the target area whose defenses had been thoroughly alerted. Flames higher than their aircraft added to the enemy's point-blank attack. But rather than turn back from such a vital mission, Kane and Johnson elected to lead their planes through the blazing inferno and across the specified target at minimum altitude. Some planes were hit miles before their target, but kept flying forward into the flames even though their punctured fuel tanks were streaming gasoline. Kane's men fired 2,400 rounds of ammunition in 90 seconds over the target, often firing upward at anti-aircraft units on tops of buildings. Despite the hazard of oil fires, exploding delayed action bombs and enemy fighters, Colonel Johnson also delivered his bombs on target. Nine planes of his group were lost in the hail of enemy bullets. At one time, three separate bomb groups were over the target simultaneously, flying in different directions at low altitude. Enemy observers said it was the greatest exhibition of flying skill they had ever seen. They thought it was planned that way. 41 planes were lost in the mission, but the vital Ploesti oil field had been severely crippled. With not enough fuel to return to Benghazi, Colonel Kane was forced to lead his group to a landing on the island of Cyprus in the Mediterranean. <laughs> 